Well, today, attorneys representing Bruce Phillips, uh, representing Bruce Phillips and Amtrak dispatcher, have filed what is believed to be the first lawsuit against Amtrak over uh, this derailment. Uh, Phillips was uh, commuting to New York City when that train crashed, and he is still hospitalized. He's suffering from brain trauma. That's according to his attorneys, Robert Myers and Mike Oley, and they join me now. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Robert, the first Thank question you. is, I want, how's he doing, and what happened to him? Mr. Phillips was uh, actually an employee of Amtrak. He's a dispatcher, and he was on his way to New York to work. He was riding in the last car of the train when this terrible collision, the derailment, all the cars were being jumped and thrown in the air, and he got thrown up in the air, was propelled against the luggage rack, back, back down on the seats, and really the next thing he remembers is work, waking up in Temple University Hospital. You're saying that he sustained traumatic brain injury, multiple contusions and lacerations of the body, and correct? Right. Yeah. He's still, he was still undergoing diagnostic tests. Yeah. Uh, and his treatment, well, hasn't even begun yet. Okay, so you're accusing Amtrak, you said, of gross negligence. How are they negligent? You're, any time a train is operating twice the speed of, of the restricted speed in that area, this just isn't negligence. This is way beyond what any any train can be doing at any time. This is this is horrendous. Yeah. And, you're, and plus, you have to remember, the train is going into a curve. So you're speeding up going into a curve instead of slowing down going into a curve. Mike, you're saying that Amtrak is liable, and this is a quote from you, for failure to provide available, necessary, and appropriate systems to slow and or stop the train. Talk to me about that. Well, first and foremost, you know, the evidence is clear that the train itself was going in excess of 100 miles an hour on that curve, which is over twice the speed limit for mm -hmm. that area. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about positive train control, you know, in the media in the last couple of days. Uh, Congress implemented this program. It's supposed to be completed within a certain number of years, and the various railroads have implemented that across the country. Mm -hmm. And Amtrak's done that on much of its property, but not this curve. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know that's designed to stop the train, you know, if the engineer is going too fast. But uh, you don't know why. I mean, it, and then it is. It, the, it, I had the, a member of the NTSB here saying right. we still don't know why. We, you know, we have the information from the black boxes. We haven't had time to really examine all of the information. It's just three days in filing a lawsuit this soon. Is that? Now, the reason, to many people, it seems too Now, quick. the reason the lawsuit was filed, Bob and myself have represented uh, union railroad workers over the years. They uh, are a little different than other employees. They're not subject to state compensation laws. Their claims are covered by what's called the Federal Employers Liability Act. Mm -hmm. And while they're out of work, they're not entitled to be compensated in any way by their employer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, uh, the reason for filing a lawsuit at this stage is to move this forward so that this man is not, you know, without compensation during the period of time that he'll be out of work. What do you Obviously, we, we also want to, you know, get involved in discovery early. We anticipate there'll be a number, a number of these claims filed. They'll be consolidated for purposes of discovery, most likely in federal court in Philadelphia. And we anticipate that the NTSB report will be done within a matter of months. So it's too early to say if anyone's cooperating with you or not because there's no discovery, there's nothing, right? It's oh, no, no. I mean, at this stage, you know, Amtrak still has to answer the complaint. We've represented railroad workers against Amtrak for years. We're familiar with the defense, defense counsel, and the claims department. So and, you've, and you've won? Uh, multiple, multiple times. Multiple times. In similar situations? Similar, but not obviously a crash of this magnitude, which is devastating. What are you uh, seeking? We've represented freight railroad workers in smaller collisions. What are you seeking? How much are you seeking? I couldn't uh, hear you. How much are you seeking? Well, in, when you file a complaint in federal court, it's not a specific amount. You're claiming an excess of a certain amount, and that's something to be de determined later on. But under the Federal Law Employers Liability Act, he can sue for his past and future wage loss, as yeah. well as pain and suffering. But we also have a count in common law negligence, which allows both he and his wife to pursue claims on uh, additional negligence counts. We've received a number of calls from other passengers uh, okay. that we have not yet met with, but you know their claims will be similar. Obviously, all you know you have the devastating, devastating injuries and deaths, and then you have the you know the less minor claims. But right. collectively. Uh, all of these cases we anticipate will be consolidated and there will be a lot of cooperation obviously between the various counsel representing these people. When your client is able, we'd love to speak to your client once your client's able to talk. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Bob. We appreciate you. Thank you, you very much. It was nice meeting you. And, 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 and please just send our wishes to all the families who have suffered Absolutely. in this. Absolutely. Thank when you. we come right back here, we're